Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Think Tech for another edition of Tourism 101, where we'll be talking about everything that has to do with tourism. Our guest today is a very special woman in our community who, together with her husband, have built a very successful small business enterprise on the heels of the hospitality industry. I'm talking about Shah Thompson. Mm -hmm. And together with her husband, Jack Tihati Thompson, have been able to employ thousands of people through the years through Tihati Productions. And next year, they'll be celebrating mm -hmm. their 50th anniversary. Shah, good morning and welcome Aloha to our show. Aloha Mufi. Thank you for inviting me. I can't believe next year is 50 years. Where did the years go? <laughs> you must have started when you were two years yeah, old. There you go. There you go. <laughs> now, let's talk about, uh, you know, I always like to reminisce. I always like to go down memory lane. Yes. Tell us about uh, growing up in, uh, in Kali and, and going to Farrington High School where Jack also went to school. I'll tell you, I am so grateful for the visitor industry. Um, you know, next year, they're actually writing a legacy book on Tihati Productions and its uh, founders. That's us. And I, and I made a joke with them, and I said, I thought you had to discover penicillin before you get it, you know. But the visitor industry is so important that they felt I've been a part of it. We've been a part of it for coming up 50 years. So they're doing a book, and we'll have a great gala. And I want to say thank you to the industry, the whole industry, but mainly um, different organizations that, that help bring us to where we're at today. So, yeah, we're fit. this is what a kupuna looks like, okay? <laughs> now, Jack and you met at Farrington High School. We did. You were high school sweethearts. Yes, yes, we were high school sweethearts. And did you know back then when you were a, a song leader at Farrington <laughs> High School and Jack was a star athlete that one day you folks would be having this very successful business? I truly did not because Jack really is a shy, kind of quiet guy. And as you know, I'm loud. And, uh, and so I, I didn't, and, and quite frankly, he was a gentleman, meaning his father was part of the Navy. And um, so he came to Farrington High School with his shirt tucked in, and he wore loafers. And, you know, I come from a very big Hawaiian family, and my brothers are, are rough guys. And so all of our, us girls were tomboys. And, uh, and I thought, <laughs> I thought, quite frankly, he was a little bit too much gentleman for me. <laughs> but uh, as we worked together, and we did work together before we were married, at the old Queen Surf, Puka Puka Otea. That's where it all in started. In 1965. Um, and I saw this handsome, handsome person. And I thought, but eh, he's too quiet. It was meant to be. We just made 53 years. Married, oh, just nice. 63 years. Very, very, and and 16 mo'opuna, 16 grandchildren. Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> That's my claim to fame, by the way. So, so I want to talk about what you're known as. I mean, your first name is really Charlene. Yes. But the shortened version is Sha. Yes. And Jack, of course, is known as Tihati. Tihati, yes. So, so tell me how Sha came to be, and how the, <laughs> you, uh, Jack, was able to adopt the name Tihati, which has been your moniker through the years, Tihati Productions. Okay, let's start with uh, Tihati. He was this shy guy that would come when we were dating and pick me up after work at 3 in the morning, because in those days you had three shows that ended, at, it started at 1.30 in the morning at the old Queen Sir, and he'd pick me up and, and, and we were dating. And finally, everybody went to the World's Fair, and there were no knife dancers. And he said to me, you know, I wonder if I can learn that dance. I said, yeah, you're Samoan. Oh, you should learn it. But I didn't believe that he would, he would try it. Well, everybody went away, and my mentor, Elaine Frisbee, said, can your boyfriend dance? I said, oh, yeah, he's very good. <laughs> well, the first day he danced, I was certain that I was going to break up with him. I was certain. And he'll tell you this story. He was so bad. Uh, and today, he'll say that to all of our knife dancers because we have 12 world-ranking knife dancers in our company. My son is included. And he'll say, I was so bad, but God blessed me. Look at that. I learned this dance, and look at all these kids that we employ that can do it so well. So, and my name, Shah, coming from Charlene, the kids in Kalihi, where I grew up, never used R's. I was never Shar. And I can tell when people don't know me from business organizations, they'll call the company and say, may I speak to Shar, please? And they say, we don't have a Shar here. Uh, so they never said R's, so I became Shah. And then Karen, Ke'ave Hawaii, made it um, really known as Shah, because she started writing the Shah of Waikiki, you know, even though it's spelled C-H-A. Um, so that's how we got our names, Tihati and Shah. Great. Now, 
Let's talk about the company itself. Today, you are uh, and Jack are basically in retirement. Yes. Having turned the company over to yes. Afatia and Misty. Mm -hmm. Uh, how has that transition been to two of your children now actually running the company, making the day-to-day -day decisions? Are you really completely out of it? <laughs> no, I'm still the CEO. <laughs> I'm still I knew the there CEO. was a catch in there. <laughs> uh, I tried to. It, it was difficult for them, they tell me. It was difficult for them because it was hard to let go, and I guess so. I didn't think so. I'd go in and check and give my opinions, but they didn't listen to it. They have taken it to a different level. I mean... It's no longer a uh, MC introduction. My daughter is a research specialist, and this is what she went to school for. So she will research the area or the district where the shows are at, and she'll bring back all the facts of Hawaiiana and how it derived its name, uh, how the Helumoa was Helumoa before it became Waikiki. Uh, um, and so they did bring it up. When we were first married and having our babies and, and working day jobs, what my mother called real jobs, um, we, we didn't have the time. You just, you needed to be cute and you could dance well and, and you, dan you worked for a lesser amount of money. Today it's a business, it's a big business because that's what they went to colleges for, that's what they went to school for and they, they look at the company different. I still, I used to know every single employee. I knew every one of their children. I went to every baptism, I went to every graduation. I can't do that anymore, not with a thousand employees. But I'm the old lady, and he's the old man, and when we go, we get our enjoyment by them just saying, wow, we met Tihati and Shah, you know. But Misty and um, Afatia, they, 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 they just know what to do. That's why you send them to good schools. They, they and represent those the good community. schools were? Oh, heavens. One went to Colum uh, not Columbia, Colorado State University, and of course, Afa was the first string running back for June Jones at the uh, University of Hawaii. And Misty uh, majored in journalism. What kind of journalism, though? Whatever. In journalism, and Fatia was in business. And they tell us that they think differently from us. So I, but I always say, but for the grace of God, there go I, so you too. And I say that because they say, you know, she's from Kalihi Valley Housing. That's why she <laughs> says that. But I, I use that example all the time. You were born on Port Lac Road. I was born in Kalihi. So we do have a little bit of a difference. <laughs> great, great. Now, they obviously had some big shoes to fill because when you and Jack were in charge of the company, I remember back in 1986, uh, you were uh, voted the Hawaii Small Business of the Year. And then later on, you folks were inducted into the Hawaii Business Hall of Fame. Yes. So they don't really feel that pressure <laughs> uh, of having to yeah. do well because yeah. they've been yeah. brought up in the company, yeah. obviously, and then also now putting their own stamp uh, and going for it. Today, you still have 1,000 employees. Still. And, and how many shows throughout the island? I think it's 13 or 14. Um, our latest was the Aulani, the Disney Aulani. We opened that and nice. we're grateful for that. Very nice. But every show is different. So what they try to do when we were doing it, we'd teach all the employees and everybody had a separate show and you knew it. Afatia and Misty taught, made sure that every show knew every other show. They knew all the dances. Therefore, if Maui is short of two performers tonight, you fly them over from Honolulu. Wow. So it's a whole new thing. I, I mean, we worked so hard that, and I was still teaching at the time, we'd teach Maui and we'd teach a big island and we'd teach Kauai and then I'd say, what numbers, what, what are we doing? What is, what's happening there? But they, they have themed it, and they've named every show. We were just always Tihati Productions. Tihati Productions on, at Hyatt, Tihati Production at Hilton. T Today, you go to the uh, Te Mawananui Mawana at the Princess Kayulani, separate uh, uh, mm, format. Anyway, every show has their own identity, their own theme, because it's in a different district. And that's what they've done, the research that Misty Mokihana has done. It's very different, so we go and we enjoy it a lot. Now, in my opinion, you folks have really been blessed because you've been around for 50 oh, years. Oh, heavens. And, you know, luau shows, wine shows, Polynesian shows, sometimes come and go, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the market, depending on the interest, sometimes depending on ownership. So what has been the secret that has kept Tihati Productions alive and well and continues to be one of Hawaii's best small businesses? You know, Mufi, a lot of people will think this is um, a cliché, but for Jack and I, the book that they're writing, the legacy book of Tihati Productions, 
we said to the writer, we want to make sure that the reader understands that we understand, but for the grace of God, there go I. I, I mean, that we believe that with our whole heart and soul. I mean, two Kalihi kids, I did go back to school, and, I, and I'm going to say this. When I got my degree from um, Hawaii, uh, Hawaii Pacific, Pacific University. University, and Jack drove me every night, every night. A Bachelor of Science, I might add, in Judicial yeah. Administration. Yes, and yes. When I did get it, I thought, but I, I'd gotten all the kudos and the Business Hall of Fame and the small business and, and many others already. What is this going to do for me? And honestly, for those that sit on boards, you understand. You don't get the respect until you have that palapala. And I thought, but I used to talk them down without the palapala. So uh, my point is, it's very important. Education, the degree, it's important. But again, but for the grace of God, because I did all of that before I got it. A and now that I have it, uh, nobody asks me about my uh, judicial administration thing. They still ask me about tourism. And boy, am I grateful for tourism. Have you had some mentors along the way, both you and Jack, they sort of uh, served as role models and examples for you? I did, I did. Well, Elaine Frisbee, for instance, was one. Um, my kumuhulas, uh, Rose Mauna Kea Lane. Myrtle Lee was my tourism industry um, mentor. And the reason is entertainers don't get long contracts. You get it for a year. Sometimes you don't get one. You get it for a year, and then maybe they'll renew it, and or maybe they'll just roll it over, or maybe. Um, before Myrtle Lee left the industry, she called us in, and she said, you two deserve this. And we were the first entertainment company that got a five-year contract, and, and that just shot us. I mean, other hotel general managers followed suit and said, why would she trust these kids? And so now, with, with 13 or 14 shows, whatever it is, Myrtle started that, Myrtle Lee. And don't you also lend your expertise to training uh, folks from other countries that want to do? Oh. Remember a few years back, wasn't it Thailand? Yes, yes. 250 performers on a stage, and it was a 500, mm -mm, mm -mm, 5,000 seating uh, supper club, and they would bring your food on skates. I, I kid you not, they bring <laughs> it on skates. And I remember when we left simply because there was a civil war. And I was there in the White House, no, they're not a White House, in the palace, when the king made the two opposing parties crawl and make friends. That was very impressive. But we left shortly after because the, the war was still on. But at least the king had his say with everybody chill. This is both our countries. So in the visitor industry and our, and our occupation sure afforded Jack and I an awful lot of travel and experience, you know. Um, we've been more than halfway around the world. Well, But I trained. I trained them down there. Absolutely. So. <laughs> well, we're going to be coming up on our, our next segment here after we take a pause for the cause. Because we're here this morning talking with Shaw Thompson. As you can see, she's so full of energy. <laughs> and we haven't even scratched the surface of what this iconic woman is all about. We're going to talk about her community involvement, for example, and her latest venture uh, in the tourism industry. <laughs> Heard of the Blue Note Hawaii? That's Sha Thompson. We'll talk about that after we take this break. Because here, once again, we're here in Think Tech Hawaii. This show is called Tourism 101, where we delve deep uh, into the tourism industry, talk about things that are happening, especially as seen through the eyes of people that have a track record of making things happen. So happy to have Sha here this morning. And together with her husband, Jack, they're coming up on their 50th anniversary of Tihati Productions in Hawaii. We'll be right back. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. 
Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Our guest today on Tourism 101 is Sha Thompson. Uh, we've talked about uh, the beginnings of Tihati Productions, how they met as sweethearts in Kalihi, and certainly now have developed a very successful company. But I want to delve into the other side of Sha Thompson that may not be as well known to folks outside the industry of how involved she is. I mean, here's a woman who's been on the police commission. She's been involved with the Law United Way. Uh, she's been involved in fundraising activities. Uh, she also has uh, accomplished so much that the Girl Scouts made her a woman distinction. Uh, she was the Distinguished Woman of the Year uh, and also the Mother of the Year by the American Mothers Association. So, Shah, I, I know you don't like the spotlight shine on you, but you've done so much. And I want to focus on how much you and Jack do to give back to the community. I mean, you're not two individuals that are kind of hoarding it for your immediate family. You're always looking to help. It could be schools. It could be your fellow entertainers. It could be causes uh, that are going unnoticed in the community. And when you get involved, all of a sudden everybody goes, oh, Shah's involved. You know, we've got to give. Well, I think one of the awards that I appreciate the most and I'm most proud of is Mother of the Year for the state of Hawaii because I believe everything happens in the home, everything. Um, and, and when they called me, American Mothers Inc. called me, I said, what is that? I thought every, I mean, I'm sure. Most mothers do exactly what I do. Yes, you do make the home lunch, and yes, you go to PTA meetings, and yes, you do. But I think we owe a debt to mothers that work and are mothers. So when I hear women that don't work outside of the home and they say, oh, I don't work, I think, oh, you silly lady. Let's tell them what you do, what you actually do. Um, you know, we raised our own four children and eight more. They were either relatives and came from families that didn't have as much or, you know, anyway, we raised 12 children. And everyone, the line dulls when it comes to ch the children I bore and the Hanai that we raised. They are all very close even today. And on Sundays at the church, everybody comes to the Portlock Thompson's house because we have the best food on Sundays. We have a huge kongai and everybody eats and they don't go home. Uh, we watch TV or the kids are swimming or whatever, and they lie out on the floor. There's bodies all over the floor. And then we have dinner together. So, um, you know, it's it's a big deal. This is one of the reasons I appreciate the Mother of the Year Award, mostly. Yeah. Well, I, I think the classic scenario with the Thompson family is you don't eat till you fool you too tight. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw the size of my boys. Oh, I've seen it. Oh, Believe, I mean... you <laughs> Believe you me. Believe you me. So let's talk about the, the tourism industry oh, uh, in yes. general. Um, you've said repeatedly during this segment with you of how blessed we are to have yes. a wonderful tourism industry. Uh, what do you see as some of the challenges going forward so that we can maintain the best of what the industry has offered through the years? I especially like the fact now that because you and Jack have been such proponents of the importance of the culture, uh, we see that much more reflected uh, in everything that we do yes. about tourism. Yes. I think for one thing, and, and you know, like you said, I've been here for, been around for 50 years. I think that we must continue to be sure that there's an even allowance for both the visitor industry and the residents. Because some of the residents that don't understand what we're doing uh, sometimes think we're the big bullies that do everything for tourists. Not so, not so. There are many, many, and, and, and we may run out of time, but there's many, uh, uh, perks or benefits for the local people to get involved with our one one with tourism. Um, my mother, for instance, during her time was very anti-tourism. However, she learned through me, first of all, when she came to Pukupuku Atea to see me dance, she thought that I should put more clothes on. So, <laughs> so that was the one thing. But then she realized that the benefit that, that tourism affords the local people, and it's not just jobs. Uh, we meet people from abroad that we have made Tihati and I have made lifetime friends with, and they understand our plight, we understand theirs. We must continually, the visitor industry is our responsibility to make sure that the visitor, uh, the resident is included and involved in whatever we do in tourism. 
First of all, we do have too many people now. I'm going to get scolded for that. No, 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 go ahead. We, aren't we 10 million visitors now or 9 We're point getting close whatever? close to it, yeah, 10 million. And, and so, and I say this to all the general managers, I'm with every chain, Hilton, Hyatt, Sheridan, um, you name it. I say, the parking is going to kill the local person here. Now, I understand that part of it, too. But we must continually remember that that's not all that, not, that's not all that Hawaii is, tourism. It is our number one industry. But we also have much more to share from the local residents, much more. So if you get a chance to stay in a, a resident's home, stay. We do that all the time. We invite people. And they, of course, my daughter calls our house the Grand Central Station. But people stay with us all the time. And you leave a lasting effect on those that don't really know Hawaiiana or island people. And I don't just mean the Hawaiians. Because right now, the Filipinos are our largest ethnicity. Right. And they are Fast as scrolling. warm and as wonderful as the Japanese people in Hawaii. Hawaii people are Hawaii, is Hawaii. So what would be your message to government officials or tourism leaders in terms of making sure that we stay connected with the community mm -hmm. and that we have our ear to the ground and we're listening as much as we're talking about their concerns uh, that need to be addressed uh, if we're going to have an industry that truly is going to be prosperous and advantageous for everyone who calls Hawaii home. I'm thankful for some of the legislators, not all. Some of the leaders, I don't think, are, are with it at this time. I don't think. I don't think they talk in, I think they talk only to their followers, maybe, only to, I think that they need to be more inclusive. I, I really don't think we're and I think that the different organizations of tourism, one of the, my favorite ones is the Aloha Visitor, Jessica, oh, shucks, but Bash. she takes care. Yeah, Jessica Bash, Lani, Bash, Jessica thank you. Lani they do a great job and they don't try to take credit for anything. Maybe we have to go a little higher up and say, okay, you got your picture taken today, but listen to so-and-so that came in this morning and you guys checked them off. I really think that our politicians need to be more effective in working with all the different organizations and not try to make brownie points. You must listen to the Hawaiians. They have a plight. You must listen. I mean, I don't talk about, I don't think radically they don't have to do that, but they need to listen and not exclude people. So, you need, so you're saying that they need to come out of their offices more, huh. get out in the community, <laughs> be open to criticisms, That's what I meant about don't just come to have your picture taken. Uh, and, the, and the people know, they really know which makes me very sad that you are not involved, but I'm not going to say those things. <laughs> now, let, let's talk about what, what you've done to show um, the advantages of being involved with the visitor industry. One of the things that I give you and Jack big kudos on mm. is I've seen you folks many times when a fellow entertainer, when a fellow leader in our community uh, who's going through struggles, going through hardships, whether it be for medical expenses, in some cases they've passed on, and you folks never hesitate to come up with a fundraiser where you bring the industry together, where they get to demonstrate that aloha and compassion for each other, and you put everybody in a good place by doing that. I have had the privilege of, of serving in areas like that, like a good friend that just left us down hole. I ran his funeral. Um, our sweet, sweet Willie Kay, um, who had cancer, we had a big fundraiser for him. But more importantly, that's just the nature of Hawaii's people. I mean, the first ones to call and say, Sha, so-and-so is sick, or, or Sha, the school needs help, or, uh, and, I, and I just go. So I think it's, honestly, I think it's a gift that I maybe was born with and love it, and, and, and don't, don't think I deserve any kudos for that. I just think that that's part of what Hawaii is all about. I'm not the only one that does that. Visitor industry is amazing. Entertainers, absolutely, always, you know, you, we come in and we do a huge show and everybody comes to see the named performers and we raise all the money. I'm most proud that I gave Skip a Diaz $12,000 when Farrington High School football team did not have money for helmets. And we, and we gave Skip it because I'm a Farringtonian. And, and when we celebrated our 25th year, mind you, we're going on to our 50th, but when we celebrated our 25th year, we gave every cent. We gave, I don't know what it was, 50000 to uh, St. Louis High School, we gave to Farrington, we gave to the uh, Waikiki Improvement, because I really believe we made all our money because of the Hotel Association. So 
we're going to do it again next year, and I'm so grateful that we have the privilege to do that. I mean, we'll give money away. People need the money, and so we well, do that. Well, I want to say on behalf of the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association, we really are very grateful uh, to Tehati Productions uh, with you and Tehati leading the way and setting aside some funds many years ago that we were able uh, to now use that for what we call the Don Ho Legacy Award. Yeah. I didn't even remember doing that, but I'm so grateful. <laughs> that we give it to a student of Hawaiian ancestry yeah, yes. that wants to pursue music, arts, culture, and entertainment mm -hmm. uh, in college, mm -hmm. and then hopefully that will be their profession. And thanks to you, we can do that every year. Well, you know, we do have an um, arts scholarship from Tihati Productions for anybody that wants to get into the business, because I don't know a business tougher than entertainment. I mean, when we started, we'd work next for next to nothing. Don Ho gave us our first break, and we were paid for 12 performers. We had 35, called every relative we had, especially Tiati. Oh, he has relatives. And, and, and so it, it's just part of our nature to help advance um, entertainment in the islands. And because of that, in essence, we're helping tourism and loving it, grateful for it. So in parting words here, and the last question I'm asking you, so what would be your advice to that person now who is thinking about a career? Mm -hmm. uh, and has all these choices before them, and, and maybe they have an inkling to go in the visit industry, but they're thinking, ah, it's a service industry. It is. Uh, depends on tourists coming here. What would you say to that person? I would say, like I say to all the kids, follow your dreams, but be true to yourself. Don't try to do something that you know you're not serious about. Don't go in for just the money. Um, follow your dreams and hang in. Don't be afraid of anything. Well, as you see, we've been very blessed this uh, show to have uh, Shaw Thompson. Uh, she certainly leads by example. I've known Shaw and <laughs> Tihati for a long time. Her exuberance, her appearance today is just as it was back in the day, and we really appreciate all that she's done. And most importantly, she's passing it on now to the next generation of leaders. I'm big on mentoring, and yeah. they've awfully, obviously have done a great job of mentoring Misty uh, and Afatia. Uh, that they are going to continue the legacy of Tehati Productions. Thank you, Mupi. Happy to be here. Mahalo nui loa, and we'll see you next week. Uh, Aloha. When we have uh, our next show, uh, we're scheduled here on Think Tech to be able to, again, focus on tourism one-on-one, -on -one, what makes this industry tick, what we need to do in going forward to assure that all the challenges are there, that we have solutions for them to ensure that this industry remains no kahoi. Mahalo.